One thing that they, that they tell young magazine journalists right when you're starting out is people really love dinosaurs. Um, so, uh, so tonight should be uh, especially fun. I say that because, um, as, uh, as Tom Hayden, who's in the second row here, put it in, uh, in his story in this month's issue, uh, there, really, there probably isn't a living paleontologist who's done more to shape the way most of us think about dinosaurs than Jack Horner, who's sitting here next to me. Um, so, you know, fast moving and warm blooded, that was him. Streamlined and leaned forward with the razor sharp claws, that was him. Uh, you know, the dinosaur biology that kind of motivated Jurassic Park and, and now more lately the show Terra Nova, if you've seen that, is uh, really in large measure from Jack's brain. So his latest project um, is, is cracking into the developmental biology of, of birds, really. Um, dinosaurs' last living descendants on Earth and, and kind of trying to shift a few molecular signals around to create or, I guess, recreate a living dinosaur here on Earth. Um, as we like to say around the office, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, <laughs> so uh, that's most of what we're going to talk about tonight. So please uh, help me welcome Jack Horner. <laughs> So before we talk about evolution and chickens, I want to start with some basics. Um, can you describe what it is like to do paleontology field work? How, what it is like to, to find a dinosaur bone? How, does, is it still exciting to you? It's very exciting. I, I, well, I, it's hard to explain because basically it's really easy. I mean, I, geologists have, have mapped the world. So we know where all the different age rocks are. We know that when we're working in rock that is 230 million years old to 65 million years old, um, we find dinosaurs. And so, because that's where we find dinosaurs, that's where we go look again. So one of the things that, I, that uh, in, in reading the, um, it's not your last book, but the, but, um, but the 2009 book about this project, largely, mm -hmm. uh, you, you talk a lot about that even though a fossil is, uh, is a remineralized bone, that there's a lot of, there's sort of parts of bone have been replaced, so it's more like stone, that there are still things that you can learn from it on a microscopic scale. And that's some of what, some yeah. of what led to this project. So I wonder if you can talk a little bit about how you think new technologies and new techniques are, are changing and adding to what you do as a paleontologist. Well, first, First off, really there are two kinds of fossilization. I mean, it's something can be petrified or it can be permineralized. And we generally think everything's petrified, but it isn't. Petrification is, is when one mineral is replaced by another. So most wood is petrified. Right. So it started out as carbon and it goes to silica. Permineralization is different. It's, it's actually, you have the original bone and basically the empty spaces have been filled in with another mineral. So the empty spaces are where the soft tissues were. Well, we thought that for a long time, that all the soft tissue went away. So but you're, you're talking about blood vessels, about organs, about Blood vessels, visceral. you know, collagen, all that stuff. We just assumed went completely away and it was all those spaces filled with, with uh, with uh, calcite or you know some other mineral. But it turned out that deep inside of some bones, we actually started, one of my former students, Mary Schweitzer, actually took a bone and put it in acid and, and ate away the bone and lo and behold, there was, was blood vessels. And she eventually even got proteins, collagen protein out of this stuff. So, since then, we've, we've changed our way of actually collecting a dinosaur. I mean, we're very careful now. And in fact, we built a laboratory, a field, a, a clean lab, you know, where you put your little booties on and all that stuff, in the back of an 18-wheeler trailer so we could take it to the site because as soon as you get one of these bones out that actually has this stuff in it, it starts degrading. Right. So we wanted to get to it as quick as possible, and some of it's just incredible. But so this is a, I, I want to hear what it is, but this, I, this seems like it's something of a pendulum swing, because I remember when Jurassic Park came out, even the book, even before mm -hmm. the movie, and the notion was, you know, you'd, you'd have DNA that you could use in the right. blood that the mosquito had eaten that was trapped in the amber. And then when the, the science kind of tried to catch up with that, I, that science fiction idea, it turned out that, well, DNA degrades too, right. too much over that 65 million 
year time we, span, it won't work. But now you're saying, well, actually, it might not be DNA, but there are proteins and there are right. cells yeah, we, that you can find. We actually got an NSF grant to extract, to attempt to extract DNA from a T-Rex the year the movie came out. <laughs> that's, some good pub that's, that's a good publicist at work at NSF, yeah. is what that yeah. is. But we were not, I mean, it, we, we did not find any. And one of these days, I would guess that we will find little tiny pieces of DNA, but we won't be able to do anything with it. Right. So, but we are getting proteins, and we're getting quite a bit of it. So, so but you know, you're not going to use, you know, with collagen, you can't really make a dinosaur. Hard to clone from collagen. Right. right. But now you're talking about doing what I thought was anathema to what paleontologists wanted, which is you're doing a, essentially a destructive test on the bone that you found. I mean, you're doing something that's going to break it, right? We actually do quite a bit of destructive. I, I wouldn't call it, we don't call it destructive at all. Well, actually. I don't mean in the sense of like, obviously, you know, disintegrating the thing, right. but just like you, you know, you're well, taking a piece do. out of it we out and breaking it We do take a piece out of it. Um, but the thing is, is that, you know, if you look at a bone, I mean, you even look at this chicken bone, you know, the chicken stuff. I mean, it, you can, if you're just looking at the skeleton, right. you're looking at the surface of it. and the surface has a lot of morphological detail and you can learn a lot of, you can look at muscle scars and you can learn a lot about, you know, the biomechanics of the thing and you can learn a lot about, you know, comparative anatomy by comparing it to something else. But you can't learn about how fast this animal grew or how old it was when it died. There's no way to determine that just looking at it like this. But if we cut inside the bone, we can learn all, I mean, we, we can determine with, an, with virtually any animal, you can determine what its metabolism was like. You can tell how old it was when it died. I mean, there's just, and that's where all the proteins are going to be, and that's where, you know, it's where the biology of the animal really is. And so, so, so you know, it's an, it's an enhancement, as far as I'm concerned, to actually drill a hole in it. Is that, is that controversial with your colleagues or with folks in related it, it, fields? Yeah, well, it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it, they're starting to realize now that, you know, I, as we publish more and more papers uh, looking inside of bones, they, they're realizing that, you know, they could be publishing too if they <laughs> drilled a hole. Uh, and does it work with old samples too, or is it only stuff that's it, still in the ground? It works with... Well, I mean, you can't get the kind of... I mean, old, I realize, also is relative. You can't get the beautiful stuff we're getting, you know, when we work the way we are. But on the other hand, you can look at the bone histology. I mean, you can look at the cellular structure of the bone. And you can do that with any, you know, in any collection. But museum, you know, museum, collect, museum curators, um, they like their stuff. And they like, you know, stuff to look at. And they don't really, they don't really like the fact that we drill holes in them or cut them. Sometimes what we do is we take a whole bone, take a whole bone and break it in two. And then we break a chunk off of it, off of that, and, and then we mold and cast it. And then we can put the cast back on the bone and so it looks, looks just like it did before you broke it. So the surface is still there. You have an huh. exact cast of the broken piece. Then you can take that broken piece and cut it up and right. drill it and destroy it. Well, all right, so um, since we've been talking about sort of that micro level of detail and analysis on fossils, and since you mentioned the chicken skeleton, let's talk a little bit about the, the story that Tom did. Um, I mean, maybe I, I should just have you walk through kind of what your punch list is. What are you actually trying to do with, right. the, well, with the chicken embryo well, so, that you want so to we, change? So we, so the problem was that, you know, we really, we wanted to see if we could recreate a dinosaur. And we were thinking that we could get DNA. I mean, we really thought there was some capability of getting DNA out of a dinosaur. People had tried to get it out of amber, out of an insect, like they did in the dinosaur day, you know, in the dinosaur movies. But that didn't work, and we couldn't get it out of a dinosaur, and so... And with notionally, I mean, the idea was going to be, so you, now that cloning has gotten better, maybe you can, if you can get the DNA, you can do a clone. Well, you know, if, if you can get some DNA, you ought to try to do something with it. All right? Sure. I mean, and, you I, mean, know, I guess, I mean, maybe. I mean, right, I, don't, right. I'm, I'm, I don't know I don't, how far I know, want to go down with that cloning, road. Me, but yeah. Cloning is something we really don't know how to do. I mean, we don't know how to clone any. We, 
we can clone a sheep, right, from a live cell from you know right. a sheep, but you know taking a piece of DNA out and cloning it is we're that's you know we're not there yet. Right. But but we could be there sometime soon. I mean, who knows? But but what we discovered was I mean what a lot of people discovered was that DNA breaks down in a pretty pretty rapidly. Even, you know, like the mammoth elephant that they collected out of the ice doesn't have much DNA with it. And the Cro-Magnon or whatever the caveman was that they found didn't have much. You know, they're not getting whole pieces of DNA, so. Other soft tissue still intact in those cases, just not DNA right. in the just, cells. Right, so the DNA is, you know, is a huge molecule and it, and it just breaks down pretty quick. So that just didn't seem to be the right way to go. But the thing is, is you know, is that birds are dinosaurs. Birds are dinosaurs. So, and you know, we have really good evidence of that. I mean, I, you know, you take a bird, and you know, they don't they don't look like a dinosaur at all. But, but you know, they've got a three-toed foot, and they've got they've got hollow bones, and so dinosaurs, it turns out, you know, really have all these features as well. You know, dinosaurs have hollow bones. They have a three-toed foot. They have a wishbone. They have, you know, they have feathers. I mean, they have all, of, they have hard-shelled eggs. I mean, you really, you know, and we just, we found a new one. We've got a paper in science. I can't tell you about it, but, but obviously it's, it's another it's feature. Mean. It's another feature that unites birds and dinosaurs, and, and it's a cool one. Um, but, but so, so birds are dinosaurs, but, I mean, look at it. You know, it's a chicken, and nobody wants to admit a chicken is a dinosaur. You know, I mean, that, you know, it's just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't look right. You know, it's got, look at, I mean, it's got that stumpy little tail. You know, I mean, the sixth grader looks at this and they say, you know, that I'm not gonna, I don't buy it. You know, I don't like it. <laughs> so, and you know, they've got these funny look at hands, which are wings. So, so. It is a dinosaur, though. I mean, it technically is a dinosaur. This is a theropod dinosaur. You know, make a classification. It's it, birds are dinosaurs. So. So you start so to have to. Think you don't about really have to make one, but the thing is, is that you know, you just need to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> it needs it need some. It needs some modifications. How far along are you? I mean, where, where, where does the work stand? Well, it, it's, uh, it's, it's coming along. I mean, we, we, we actually have, we have added a, a vertebrae or two to the tail. I mean, we know how to do that. So, but we're not getting as many as we want. I mean, we're still, there's still something happening. So, so, but that, so but, you know, I mean, it just takes time. But that, so then that, but that says to me that it's not just a matter of there's one gene in there. If we could just figure out how to turn that one gene off. I mean, like well, everything else when we talk about genetics, it's, it's going to be more I don't complicated think we already. found that gene. Oh, you That's, think it's still out there to track right, down? Right. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. You know, it's like, you know, it's like the creation of these knockout mice. I mean, we're trying to make knockout chickens. So we're, you know, we're silencing some genes to see what happens. And, and we did manage to get some things that are unusual. Do you feel like um, chicken embryology and development is well enough understood that you can, you can do these kind of experiments? None of this stuff is well enough understood, no. <laughs> so you're having to... We're just, we're playing. Right. Well, but that's, I mean, that, that's, that's uh, you don't hear that kind of thinking that often from a researcher who's working with kind of whole organism like live animal biology, like, well, we're going to just try some stuff. I yeah, mean, we're just going to try some stuff. I mean, that's how most discoveries are made. I mean, very few people actually discover what they're actually after, so, so I, think, I think we'll find some interesting things. Do you, do you see this work as fitting into the larger context of, like, you mentioned the mammoth, of, like, trying to do, to bring back a mammoth using an elephant surrogate mother or any of that? Yeah, I, I mean, I... I'm sure they'll be able to do that. I mean, I, I don't see any reason why they wouldn't be able to do that sometime. But, you know, we have elephants. <laughs> well, mammoths, though, I mean, that, that has no appeal for you. Well, I don't know. It's mammoths, uh, elephants, and elephant. I mean, I, 
Dinosaurs are really cool because they're gone. <laughs> Elephants aren't gone yet. Assuming that, that the tinkering that you are hoping to do is successful, do you think that you then can learn something about how dinosaurs worked? Do you have a, a, a research no. program kind of after that? You just want to see them. No, I, 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 well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know what we're going to learn. I know we're going to learn something. And, and I know we're going to learn exciting things. This whole business, the whole, you know, developmental biology, evolutionary developmental biology is, you know, such a new field that we just don't know where it's going to go. But, but I think that, it's, you know, it has some very exciting possibilities. I mean, and, and if, you know, if you're looking for an applicable thing, obviously, somewhere down the line, you, you know, you can, certainly we will have, it'll have some medical application, if that's, you know, useful. Um, but, you know, best of all for me and for Larry, right Larry, we're going to have a pet dinosaur. <laughs> And I don't see how anything can be any better than that. <laughs> All right. um, well, please join me in thanking Jack Horner for this. Thank you. Thank you.